Welcome to Viewpoints with Ascendus Travel. I'm Jeff Bolig, and today we're joined by Cheryl Wag. Cheryl's an advisor at Ascendus Travel, and today we're going to be talking about rail travel. Cheryl, welcome. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you. You know, I mentioned rail travel, and when we have people who come in the office and talk about it, you hear people light up when they talk about rail travel. They say, I wish I would have done it earlier. What, what are you hearing from the clients who travel by rail? Well, a lot of clients do a train trip and they don't even think about it being a train trip because they're doing it in conjunction with an Alaskan cruise. So they see part of Alaska and then they turn around and take the train up in uh, to the interior. Um, so I do get a lot of requests for train trips in Europe, South America, and now Canada is huge right now. And the, the feedback they get is it's a great experience? It's an excellent experience. When I am on a, a, a train, um, what is the experience like? What is, do I get to sleep on the car? Can I move around? Am I on a seat for eight hours? Tell me, what's it like to travel by, by rail? Well, uh, there's a couple different, there's a good question. There's a couple different kinds of trips there. So you've got historic trains, you've got luxury trains, you have overnight trains, and you have just as a mode of transportation. A lot of the luxury trains provide at least one, two, or more nights on the train. Some of them, like Rocky Mountaineer in Canada, they are a day train only. So you go so far and then they take you off and you stay in a hotel and then they pick you up the next morning and then you continue on your journey. You mentioned a little bit about this, but where in the world can you travel by, by rail um, rather than just a mode of transportation, but actually as a sightseeing and an experiential trip? Uh, just about anywhere now. So there are, I'm sure everybody's heard of the Orient Express in Europe and there's two very nice luxury trains in Africa, um, several other ones in Europe as well, and the United States, predominantly through the Rockies in Canada, um, and then South America, and then some in Asia. You, you talked about Rocky Mountaineer, and you talked about the Canadian, the Western Canadian routes, and I know there's different days. T talk to me, how long am I on the train on these various trips? Most of them are, are just a uh, basically a two-day trip. There's a few that are uh, three on the train itself. Okay. And then you combine that with the days on each end at your destination. So when you do these trips by rail, uh, regardless of, of where you go, are you generally combining it with like a stay either in, in advance or at the end or maybe like a, a cruise you mentioned earlier? Uh, how how does you, do you combine a rail trip? Um, well, that's pretty easy. Um, for Rocky Mountaineer in particular, you can combine Vancouver uh, or even Seattle. And if you book the Seattle extension, you can actually go on the train from Seattle up to Vancouver, a few days in Vancouver, get on the train, and then over into the Canadian Rockies. So you're seeing a little bit of British Columbia uh, and Alberta. You can actually even go over to Vancouver Island and see Bushart Gardens, Victoria. And when you're on the train, I have to believe the sights are amazing, the, the, the trees, the forest, the, the wildlife, what's it like being on the, on the train at that point? It is. I thought, especially with the motion of the train, I thought I might get a little tired <laughs> just sitting there. Never, not even once. I was so busy looking out the windows constantly and taking pictures and, and, and just enjoying just the beauty of nature with really no cities or anything in sight. We saw lots of bald eagles. We saw a grizzly bear going up the bank, snow covered. It was amazing. And a very large wolf. <laughs> so uh, just different things like that. But the train routes, depending on, they have four different routes, but the one we took happens to follow seven different rivers. So it's constantly changing the scenery. And tell me about, and we talk about the Rocky Mountaineer, is there a time of the year, is it like a, a period for say like just the sp late spring to, to fall, when, when, when can I take this trip? That's correct. It will go from uh, April until uh, early in the fall, September, or maybe even into October, depending on snow conditions, et cetera. So, so I come in and I get this trip, um, the, the rail portion, is, is that expensive to the point that you know it really makes me think whether I want to pair it with a cruise, or, or how does rail fit in from, a, from an investment? Well, there's, a, there's two options for you. You have, it's their service level. So there's silver leaf service and their gold leaf service. So their silver leaf service would be comparable to first class on a domestic airline. So your seats are very nice, the train is, is, is very roomy and comfortable, and your meals are brought to you 
uh, via a cart down the aisle and served at a tray, you know, at your seat. On the Gold Leaf service, you will go downstairs. It's a double-decker train, and you will go downstairs to the dining car, and you'll have breakfast and lunch served on on either side. The Gold Leaf service is a little bit more expensive. The Silver Leaf service is really very affordable. Well, t to me, this trip would appeal in a number of ways. Number one, if I just don't want to travel on a plane overseas far away, it, it's close, number one. And and number two, if I've done everything, if I've done the all-inclusive, I've done Hawaii, I've done Europe, this seems like that niche that maybe I should try. So is that what you're seeing for people booking these? It is. And also, it's a really relaxing. So I have a lot of very busy, busy clients, um, executives, et cetera, and they just want a chance to chill a little bit, but not necessarily on a beach. You know, they've been there, done that. So this is another unique experience for them. And uh, again, just seeing all the sights and scenery along the way, I found that they all really do enjoy that. And when they do rail, is there a guide you do you hear? Are you kind of left to your own device to figure out what you're doing? Or is there a guide uh, explaining what you do or materials? How, how does that work? During the time on the rail, there really isn't anybody telling you anything unless there happens to be something coming up. And you'll hear that from the very first car because there's several of them. And that's how we saw the Grizzly. Yeah. They'll say, Pre be prepared, there's something on the left. Yeah. So everybody's kind of looking outside yeah. trying to, to see what it is. But for the most part, um, they don't, with the exception of um, the spiral tunnels as we're coming from uh, in between Alberta and British Columbia. And the spiral tunnels are quite the engineering feat. Well, to me, uh, travel by rail I, I've done just as a mode of transportation but as an experience seems seems wonderful and Cheryl thank you for coming in today and I enjoy talking to you about rail travel okay thank you that's been viewpoints with Ascendus Travel we'll talk to you soon